some of you may have seen the video I did where I was using Premiere Pro along with my Core i9 processor and a GTX 1060. In this particular video, I'm going to do playback using Premiere Pro, but I'm going to be using my RTX 2070. But before I do that, I want to go over some benchmark scores and some statistics really quick. The score you see on the screen right now of 4,500 was done using an Intel heatsink and fan that came with my Haswell CPU. Plus, it was 90 degrees when I did that benchmark, so you should be able to get a little bit better score than what I got. But when you see the 4,920, that's using a better heatsink and fan, and the temperature was a little bit cooler. So you can tell I'm getting really close to 5,000. I don't know if that's a good score or if it's a bad score. I really don't pay too much attention to them. I just really look at how well my system works using Premiere Pro and the 3D animation software I use. Here we can see the OpenCL score of my GTX 1060. And here we can see the OpenCL score of my RTX 2070. As you can tell, the score of the RTX 2070 is close to double that of the GTX 1060. And it makes sense because the RTX 2070 has close to double the CUDA cores as the GTX 1060. Not quite double, but really close. If you look at the score of the i9 processor, it's basically about the same between these two benchmarks, even though one of them did have a better heat sink and fan. This timeline or sequence, whichever you prefer to call it, is 4K. I'm using Apple ProRes video codecs in this particular sequence. As you can tell, I'm at full resolution. I also have high quality playback enabled. If I hit play, it'll play it back just fine. But if we look at the CPU and GPU usage, the CPU is getting pegged while the GPU is not even at 50%. For some reason, the Apple video codec takes a real toll on the CPU when you're editing with Premiere Pro. Final Cut Pro 10 could probably play it much more efficient, but I thought people would want to see the CPU and GPU usage when playing back Apple ProRes. I'm going to hit stop real quick, and I just want people to see that I can scrub 4K timelines super easy. The next video clip or sequence that I want to go to is Red 1. As you can see, I'm at full resolution. I also have high quality playback enabled. This is a 4K sequence or timeline again. If I hit play, it can play it back easy enough. We can bring up the statistics as well. With the GTX 1060, I could play one layer of 4K using the Red One video codecs, but I couldn't play a picture-in-picture, -picture, let alone two picture-in-picture. -picture. So you get quite a lot better performance using the RTX 2070 versus the GTX 1060. I can also hit stop really quick, and as you can tell, I can scrub this, you know, multiple layers really easy. The next on the agenda is H.264. This is a 4K timeline. It's the ProRes video clips, but they've been transcoded H.264. I have high quality playback enabled. I should let everybody know that, yeah, I can scrub the timeline easy enough. I'm going to switch over here and hit playback. We can look at the CPU and GPU usage. So depending on the video codec, the CPU might be used more or the GPU might be used more. But we're not dropping any frames. It's a pretty powerful system having a Core i9 processor and an RTX 2070 graphics card. I'm not saying this is a setup for everybody, but I think it works out pretty well. The last thing I want to do is play my drone video clips. They're 2.7K. It's going to take a sec for it to refresh. I want to let people know that there's multiple layers right here. It's at full resolution. I do have high quality playback enabled. I'm going to hit play really quick. We can see the CPU and GPU usage. This I could do with the GTX 1060. I could play three layers, but I couldn't play four, five, or six layers. You're going to see that this RTX 2070 can easily play like seven, eight, even nine layers. You'll see it play nine layers when the transition goes by. But I'm also going to be able to take two of the video clips and make them flip and rotate on their X, Y, and Z axes. 
I want to let everybody know that all these video clips do have a Lumetri color effect applied to them. Um, all of them, the ProRes, the Red One, Kodak. As you can imagine, having high quality playback enabled can affect the real-time performance of Premiere Pro. Depending on what video resolution you're playing back and what kind of hardware you're playing back to, it can have a better image quality. So there's a reason to definitely use it. I opted to use it for this demonstration. With the RTX 2070, I can play more than double the amount of video layers, but I can also apply more effects to the layers that I have up. So it has to be more like triple the performance, I would think. It's probably pretty hard to quantify. As I stated, the GTX 1060 would allow me to edit 4K video sequences, whether it's ProRes or Red One or H.264, at full resolution with high quality enabled, any video codec I wanted. But sometimes I could only edit one single layer. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, the GTX 1060 would be good enough for me because I do cuts only editing. I don't do a lot of high end compositing. That may be true, but the GTX 1060 is old, obsolete technology. You might as well get the RTX 2060. It has 50% more CUDA cores than the GTX 1060. And it's really your best option. There's no reason to buy into the old GTX series anymore. You might as well get the RTX 2060. There are reasons to obviously get an RTX 2080 Ti if you're going to use a lot of video layers with a lot of effects. And if you're using track mats, that can really bog down even an RTX 2080 Ti. I want to add that in order to edit 4K video, whether it's Red One, H.264, you don't need an 8-core CPU. You can look through all my other old videos and see me editing with my old Haswell quad-core CPU, Red One codec at 4K, H.264 at 4K, ProRes at 4K. I admit I was at a quarter resolution a lot of the time or even at half resolution. But you don't really need to see 4K played back at full 4K. A lot of you aren't going to be outputting to an external client monitor anyhow, so you really wouldn't need to have you know, a really big, beefy system. I just wanted to include that in there as I end this video. Some people are wondering how much more powerful is the i9 processor versus my old Haswell. I didn't know what to expect. I was hoping to get at least double. I didn't know if I'd get triple the performance. But I did know that the i9 had a lot higher clock speed. It did have better CPU architecture than my old Haswell CPU. So with the higher clock speed, the better CPU architecture, and double the amount of cores and double the amount of threads, I get about triple the performance with the i9 processor than I got with my Haswell CPU. So overall, this system is a beast compared to what I used to have. But there's nothing wrong with using a quad-core, six-core CPU and using, like I said, an RTX 2060 graphics card.